All the political parties are already putting their spin on what's going to happen on Thursday night. Here's our guide to decoding their claims. Labour claim that the Tories ought to be gaining seats on Thursday night, given that they did so badly last time. Theresa May had to resign not long after. Why do you disagree? They're still um, the largest party of local government. They're still defending the most seats this time. Why might they lose seats? Simply because where they are currently in the national polls is lower than where they were in 2019 in terms of the national equivalent vote. In 2019, the Conservatives and Labour each got 31% of the national equivalent vote. And so if the Conservatives are now below 30% and Labour is above 40%, it stands to reason that there's a large swing from Conservative to Labour since four years ago. And therefore, for that simple reason, the Conservatives will lose seats to its principal opposition uh, at these local elections. Labour are saying a good night for them would be them gaining 400 seats. How does that fit in the benchmarks that you've done? I think that's a very modest claim. And, and given two things, really. One is where Labour currently is in the polls. It's at 43%. So again, if you recall in 2019, we were saying that Labour was on 31 that's an increase of 12 percentage points on the position uh, four years ago. So they should be doing uh, well. And we think far better than 400 gains. Really, that's a very modest swing um, from the Conservatives to Labour since 2019. They should really be aiming much higher than that, given what they need to do to win the next general election. Often you hear Labour politicians making the argument that these are not elections happening in their heartlands. These local councils, often shire councils, not traditional places where Labour has a strong vote. How much validity is there in that? That really, um, if you like, misses the point about the, the whole exercise of using local elections to calculate uh, a national vote share. Because we take all of this into account. We're always comparing like with like. And in 2023, we will be comparing with 2019. And for that reason, um, it doesn't really matter where the elections are because we're looking at change in vote share. And Labour are keen to avoid comparisons with 1995. They say you can't compare those two. Is that fair for them to do? I don't think it is fair, quite frankly. And, and the reason being is that if we think about the context of the next general election, Labour requires a swing greater than Tony Blair received in 1997, which in itself remains the post-war record. So I think it's reasonable to compare with 1995, simply because Labour in 24, in 2024, has to do better than Blair did in 1997. And then for that reason, if Labour is doing much, much worse than Labour did in 1995, then um, it, it stands to reason that, uh, quite frankly, uh, they're not in a good position to win the next general election. Now, the Conservatives are saying that a good night for them would be when you do your uh, national estimate of the vote, uh, that it comes out maybe no more than six or seven points uh, behind the Labour Party. And that would show progress because that's much closer than the polls uh, suggest. Is that likely? Is that a fair benchmark to use? Do you think that would be a good result for the Conservative Party? Well, if we think about the national equivalent vote share from last year, it was 35 for Labour, 33 for the Conservatives. So if there are five points of draft, then they've done worse uh, than they did last year. This doesn't suggest a party that's um, catching Labour up necessarily. Um, but they, they will certainly avoid the situation uh, as in 1995, where Labour was on 47 and the Conservatives were on 25. Huge gap uh, between the two parties. And of course, Labour went on to win a landslide. So I think uh, the Conservatives need to be within uh, touching distance of Labour, bearing in mind where we are in terms of, of the Parliament, bearing in mind that a general election is probably sometime next year, uh, there is a limited amount of time for the Conservatives to catch Labour up and therefore they, they really should be within touching distance 
of Labour, not, not a long way behind. The Tories are only focusing on this 1,000 seat loss scenario. Are, are there more realistic alternative scenarios that we should be looking at for them? You have to be in a position where conservative losses are inevitable. Um, but I think if they can keep those losses down to, say, around five to 700, they will feel that um, Labour isn't really hurting them a, a great deal. Um, and possibly also that the Liberal Democrats, who they are quite fearful of in parts of southern England, like Surrey, Cambridgeshire, uh, Hertfordshire, um, they too are, are not breaking through and threatening Conservatives uh, at the next general election. So I think if they, if they can keep losses down, say, below 500, they will probably b believe that they've had a reasonably good night at this stage of the Parliament, given uh, the way in which the current opinion polls have them below 30%. They will take that, I, I suspect. And is it fair to say that Labour traditionally underperform in local elections as compared to general elections? It is the case, and our projection, that estimate allowed for the fact that Labour does perform rather uh, worse at actual local elections than its current national opinion poll rating suggests. So we've take, we've factored that into our equation, if you like, and um, it, it allows for the fact that uh, the, the Labour lead over the Conservatives uh, in terms of the overall estimate of the national vote at these elections is not going to be as great as the gap that it has in terms of the national opinion polls.